All right, let's get going. So welcome to today's webinar from Insights to Impact, Actons Analytics in Action. Uh, I am your host. Look at that massive head picture there. Uh, my name is Christopher Johnson. I go by CJ. Um, I'm a senior customer success operations analyst here at Acton, uh, which basically means that I am responsible for analyzing usage patterns uh, and automating work and data flows for the customer success team here. I've been with Acton for almost six years. You may recognize me or my name from my time in support, but happy to happy to be presenting today. I live in Bend, Oregon uh, with my wife and our, our two border colleagues. Uh, and when most people visit or spend time in Bend, uh, you expect them to talk about the natural beauty of Central Oregon. Um, for instance, the views of the Cascade Mountains, the hikes up to Broken Top and No Name Lake, or maybe even uh, going through a snowy day in Smith Rock State Park. But no, when people talk to me about Bend, Oregon, um, they talk about the roundabouts. Um, why roundabouts? And why am I talking about roundabouts? Um, well, reporting analytics is not a straightforward sort of journey. Um, it leads you to different exits, different paths. Um, and that's that's kind of the theme for today is I'll be taking you through um, my roundabout journey through finding answers in Acton Analytics. So with that, I'll just jump right in and start with a question. Um, you know, this is something that came up from the analytics office hours that we held um, a couple of weeks ago. And you know, customers just wanted to know what month have I seen the highest click rate engagement on my emails? Um, so with that, we can just kind of jump right in on the email performance report that's uh, based out of the, the standard um, analytics package. There's a KPI tile there called click rate, and we can just hover over that and click explore uh, to dig in a little bit further. So You'll notice there um, under where the arrow is pointing, uh, we have a, a send date filter for the last 90 days. Um, since I'm looking at month over month trends, I want more than just a rolling 90 days. So um, I wanna get get myself a little bit wider time frame. So for this purpose, uh, I'm gonna arbitrarily set a filter for all messages sent after May 1st of this year. And I can do so by clicking on that filter. I'll bring up this screen and you have the option to do a rolling date or a fixed date filter. So as you can see, on or after May 1st, 2023. And what does this do? Now we see a much larger spread week over week trend. Um, and this is great. This is what we wanna see uh, when, uh, when going through sort of a reporting journey is we wanna see spikes in data because uh, it it brings up additional questions of things to to dig into so as we can see the um large spike there in the middle this is a week over week trend um you know it could be all sorts of different reasons for a spike like that maybe it's um maybe that week was a low volume send or maybe it was the opposite. And we had a, a big announcement, for, for example, like for us, uh, announcing Act on Analytics. Uh, that is right about the time that that happened. So <laughs> uh, maybe that was it. But for this, since we're looking to see the month over month trend for click rate, uh, what we're going to do is hit replace. And we're going to replace the weekly um, measure with monthly. And that gives us a much, much straighter um line there for for the trend line um, that's probably what we'd expect to see but i still want to see um some additional context into this you know sure the click rate may be hovering around the same but are we seeing higher levels of clicks um month over month so to do that uh we can hit add and we can add the total number of unique clicks as well what that'll do is displayed as a table. So this is kind of how we're digging into each of the reports um, for additional information. 
Um, so we can see, you know, September, June, May, July all had um, relatively constant click rates and numbers of clicks, um, whereas August, they have the same click rate, but a much lower number of clicks. So was this due to volume? Was it the type of message that was being sent? Um, were, was it sending to just a, a much more targeted audience? Uh, these are questions that, you know, will get asked of you probably when presenting this data. So as you dig in, it helps you find questions before anyone else asks them. Uh, moving on to another example. How about uh, subscription management in Acton? Um, you know, we use different subscription categories for our messages, but does the message performance vary by subscription category? Um, we can dig into this. Uh, in the standard standard level reports. Um, on the email performance report, uh, there's a, a tile there called message performance, click and open rates. Let's explore that one. Um, since that one shows the message performance broken down by message title, uh, what we wanna do is actually hit replace and we're going to replace message title with subscription category. Nice and easy. It uh, gives me exactly what I need, um, shows a report broken down by all messages sent over the last 90 days by this is the subscription category. Um, shows the open rates, quick and quick to open rates. Um, and you can kind of see, you know, the newsletter section <laughs> um, category seems to have lower click and click to open rates. So to me, looking at this data, what's that about? Um, what if I want to dig into this and look a little bit closer? And for that, I'll actually go one step back, back to the, the regular message performance um, tile. Um, and we're actually just going to add a filter instead of replacing message title. So for this, we can add our own filter. And what I'm going to do is say for messages with subscription category equals newsletter. Great. That gives us our four newsletters sent in the last 90 days, three of which have um, wildly different metrics. Um, the top two, more or less the same. Maybe that's what we would expect um, for our newsletters. But what was happening with the third? What was happening with the fourth? Um, you know, asking your, um, you know, maybe who's in charge. Or if you are in charge, this is going to be a question that's probably asked of you. So let's, you know, maybe that third email was, um, you know, they, it didn't have any call to actions. Some, some customers, their newsletter is strictly a reading newsletter. So they, all they care about is the open rate. That is their KPI. Um, and maybe, you know, the last one, um, it was our, let's just say it was our newsletter announcing analytics. We wanted to tell er anyone and everyone about this. So we're casting a wider net. Uh, with that, you know, it's less of a targeted email. So, you know, you would expect maybe those metrics to come down. But as you dig in, it kind of surfaces those additional questions. So this next section um, is, is geared more towards the advanced analytics package, um, how we can explore data from scratch and create our own answers. So for this purpose, um, thank you all for joining this webinar today. Um, you know, what customer webinars have the best sign-up engagement for this year? So for us, I'm gonna be kind of digging into just our Power Up webinar series. So to do this in Explore Data, you can use the search bar at the top and just type in natural language, what you want to see and what you want to measure on. Um, so for this, you know, our webinars have a naming convention. I would hope everyone else is do as well, just for simplicity. Um, and with that, the corresponding forms for the webinars do as well. So for this, I want to see forms whose form name contains um, 2023 power up. And you can enter that in quotes, which will add that filter just by typing it in, in natural language. Um, we also have some forms that were created, but we never actually went live with. So I don't want those included 
Um, so I added a filter for form, co form conversion rate is greater than zero. And then lastly, the two measures that I want to report on, the form name and the form conversion rate. So what does that give me? Exactly what I need. Um, shows our, our five, you know, power up webinars. Although, as we see there, the second one on the, the column is this webinar. And what's that about? Lowest conversion rate. But I actually do know what that's about because I ran the data before we sent the uh, the promo materials. So um, <laughs> love the way this is looking. Um, and let's say I want to, you know, keep track of this over time. You can pin this to a live board, which is essentially a custom dashboard made up of reports that you can you create yourself. Um, so you can have a, a collection of things that, that you care about. So let's say, you know, I made one for the Power Up series. We have, we could have a section for the forms and a section for, for an answer for the email performance promoting these webinars, uh, just as an example. So you can do that by clicking pin. You can create a new live board um, and you know enter in the name, which I did for a customer live board for this webinar and hit the checkbox, uh, which will create it and pin it. So moving on to another example. Uh, this one came up in, in office hours, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, a customer was, um, you know, they send all of their messages via personalized from, from their salespeople, which I thought was an interesting use case. So how would I build this out within Acton Analytics? Um, so let's take a look. Similar to the last example, I did everything with typing into the search bar at the top. Um, I wanted to see who the sender was, uh, what their quick to open rate was, the open rate over the last 90 days. And to just kind of, you know, filter out the anomalies, I put in a, a filter for somebody who sent greater than 50 emails um, to avoid those low volume senders. Pretty straightforward. Now, gives you this. Uh, for me, this is just a personal preference. Um, I don't like looking at this because there are two different y-axes on a completely different scale. Yes, we're measuring two different or we're measuring two rates, but they kind of go hand in hand. I feel like they should be on the same scale. To do this, um, I just clicked on the open rate um, axis label um, and it gives you a couple options. If we hover over the group thing <laughs> section, we can add to this group to essentially say this axis is the same as this. So we're adding quick to open rate to the open rate scale. Much better. That's uh, that's what we want to see. All one scale on the y-axis, um, broken down by sender um, and the corresponding uh, message performance. I really like this one. I'm going to pin it to my live board. You see there where the arrow is pointing, it already has my previously selected or created um, live board. And we can simply just hit pin, which will add it. really rolling through these. On to another example. Um, you know, what day of the week? This is the, the magic marketing question, right? What day of the week should I send my email? What day of the week that I send it sees the highest engagement? Um, how do we track that over time? Well, um, there's a couple ways to look at this. Um, within the email data, we have two sort of date parameters to work with. We have the day the message is sent and the day that a click happens. So um, since for this, I am going to be looking at open rate and click to open rate, I'm gonna be going based off of um, the day of the week that the message was sent. So in the top, if you literally just type day of week in the search bar, um, you'll also have pre be presented with options like week of the year, um, day of the month, month of the year, et cetera. Um, and it'll give you two options for day of the week. It'll say day of the week for send date or day of the week for click date. So that's how you would sort of select that. Um, so add that, add the open rate and the click to open rate. Pretty straightforward. 
And that gives us my, a breakdown by a day of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, um, and the open rate and click to open rate. Anything stand out to me? Um, who the heck is sending emails on weekends? Because <laughs> we see high levels of, uh, of engagement in the rates. Um, and why is the engagement on those emails so high? Let's unpack that a little bit. Since I have the rates um, of opens and clicks, let's add the totals to kind of show the magnitude of the situation. Um, I did this quickly just by um, selecting total clicked and total opened on the checkboxes on the left-hand side. Hit and go. Notice the totals aren't being charted. What's that about? Um, this is actually due to the different scales and the different types of measures, because one is a um, sort of a total, the other one's a calculated metric, uh, which is the rates. So how do we add these? The great thing about the advanced analytics package is that uh, when you're exploring this, you can manipulate this. Uh, we can do so by hitting the gear icon in the top right. And notice on the right hand side, it says not visualize total opened and total clicked. We can add these by simply clicking and dragging them to the y-axis section and hitting apply. So with that, we can see the, the more blue columns um, is the total clicked and total opens. And we can see Saturday and Sunday, basically nothing comparatively to the rest of the, the days of the week. So um, is that a representative rate that you should send all your emails on Saturdays and Sundays? Probably not. Um, but looking at these, you know, there are two days that stand out to me, Tuesdays and Thursdays, because we see high levels of engagement uh, rate-wise with a substantial number of opens and clicks as well. Um, does that mean you should send um, your emails on Tuesdays and Thursdays? Well, there could be other factors at play. So other things to consider. I kind of went through a lot of these examples very quickly, um, but sort of I, I, when I was putting this together, wanted to present a different perspective to think through analytics. And, uh, you know, I, I put down some, some follow-up questions that I think of when going through these, uh, going through these examples. So, um, you know, when we talked about the monthly engagement rates, identifying trends um, in your engagement patterns throughout the year. Is there a seasonality in your engagement? Um, and how can we capitalize on that? With subscription category, what types of messages uh, lead to the best engagement? Or which messages in each category deliver the best result and why? Um, was it a compelling subject line? Was it a clear um, call to action? You look for those anomalies to see how you can improve in your future messages. When looking at uh, performance by sender, you know, that example of using personalized from for all of your um, sales salesperson emails, does that correlate back to salesperson performance in your CRM? Um, you know, it, it kind of opens up a door for, for other things to look into. Um, similarly with form conversion rates, we're, certain webinars may be better suited to your audience? Did they have a more engaging title? Um, and then, you know, sure, you had a, a high conversion rate on the form, but how many of those people actually attended? So those are the things that, you know, you you start with one answer and then you kind of you kind of go a little bit deeper into another rabbit hole, roundabout, you take a different exit and go to um, a related, you know, sort of answer. And with engagement by day of the week, when I was going through this, um, you know, I was thinking, is it actually, does the day of the week I send the message matter or is it the day that the end user is actually, you know, reading through their inbox? Does that, is that the driver of play? So maybe, um, you know, maybe we look at the message trigger with an act on, uh, how does that differ? Are you using adaptive send, send over time, that sort of thing? How does the performance differ when using those different types? So, other things to sort of consider and how you kind of go through your analytics journey and other steps that you can take um, when going through this, going through um, these examples. So um, 
I went through that very quickly. I know we have um, a couple questions that that I've seen. Um, so I'll just quickly go through these. Uh, somebody asked, what are the differences between analytics and data studio? Uh, which do you prefer in using and why? Um, they are different. <laughs> um, analytics is completely embedded in the platform to give, um, you know, custom dashboards. It's all at an aggregate level. So um, typically performance wise, uh, a little bit cleaner and you can uh, um, create your own dashboards in the product, share it with other people, um, subscribe to it, um, subscribe to alerts. Like there's, there's various different things that you can monitor and it's all on a live data set. So um, that's kind of the, it directly connects to our data lake. Um, so it is, you know, it is a live report. Data Studio is great for um, very, very detailed information. So um, if you're wanting to look at the individual contact behavior rather than individual message behavior. So um, if I want to know um, what, you know, I did, because I know I'm a contact at one of our customers. Um, you know, it would be, I want to know what CJ is doing, what messages he's clicking on, or maybe even, you know, what is the act on domain? What are all my contacts at this company doing? Um, that's where the sort of differences are between analytics and data studio. Um, for another question, can I share my analytics reports with people who aren't users in Acton? What's the best way to use these reports in presentations and analytics? So um, yes, uh, that leave it is fixed. There was an issue with the sharing functionality, but that should be resolved if not soon. Um, you can share with people outside of um, users in Acton. So that's, that's great. You can basically send them a, schedule a weekly export and it'll send them an email with the uh, board or the answer as a PDF, uh, which is great. Um, what is the best way to use these reports and presentations and analytics? So within analytics, there's also the ability to, it has a present function. Um, so when you're going through your board, um, like if you're on your live board, there is a, there's a present button um, where you can uh, basically go through each tile or each answer one at a time to kind of go through and present on the data that's being presented. Uh, another person asked, asked, is there an export function in the analytics uh, tool? Yes. Yes, there is. You can export the, the underlying data. Um, similarly, how I was going through the um, the month over month trends and I added the clicks and it changed it to a table, you can export that data as a CSV. Um, another person, a name I recognize, <laughs> uh, is day of the week something we can look at in the standard package? Um, yes, I believe. Well, actually, I'm not sure 100%. I'll get back to you on that one because uh, I don't want to give an answer that I don't know in confidence. So um, I know who you are. I'll, I'll answer that question. We can uh, get that figured out for sure. But um, another question. Wow, this is great. Thank you for being so engaged in this. This is awesome. Um, does the analytics capture emails, messages sent within an automated program? Yes. Um, and that's actually one of the trigger types that I alluded to earlier. So in my last example, um, where I was talking about the, the launch type, which is um, adaptive send, send over time, scheduled, et cetera. There's also trigger types for a form confirmation email, a webinar email, and an automated program. Currently, um, it is just program email, form email, webinar email. Uh, but one thing that we we're adding in the future or looking to add in the future is the uh, the specific program. So then you can um, you know, filter that down to 
uh, email performance by automated program, for example, if there's multiple emails in there. Um, last, next question is, so what part is an additional fee versus standard for all users? Um, great question. I, I sort of split up the, um, the presentation for the standard. So the first couple examples where uh, if you go into Act On today under reports, you have uh, an email performance link and a forms, media, and landing pages link uh, with a sort of default uh, dashboard um, where I was just clicking explore into those examples and sort of digging into a tile that already existed. That capability is with the standard um, analytics package. The exploring data and creating your own um, creating your own answers, creating your own live boards, subscribing to those, that um, is what is included in the advanced analytics package. Um, and if you have you know more more questions on that, you can reach out to your account manager for more specific information on that. but uh, in general, those are those are the main differences. Um, and then lastly, there's a couple more examples. Uh, can anyone create their own live board? Um, sort of. <laughs> if you have the advanced analytics package, as I just alluded to, uh, users in Acton can create their own live board. Um, they can choose to make them visible to others in the account, or they can make them private as well. Um, and then lastly, uh, you know, if you have questions on creating a report, who you contact, um, reach out to your CSM. Um, they, they're, you know, happy to help you. You can also drop into our, um, any of our office hours sessions on, and actually on November 7th, we are, are holding one uh, sort of a workshop session specifically dedicated to analytics. So um, bring your questions be there. Um, also, lastly, um, the on-demand webinar goes out on Friday. Um, and in that email, you'll um, have the, the opportunity to ask some more questions, uh, which will be routed back to our team and myself um, so we can can get those answered for you. Um, and yeah, if you, if you have any other questions, um, yeah. Reach out to your CSM. They're they're great and they're wanting to to dig into this with you and and answer those questions. So that being said, thank you for the the thirty minutes this morning. It's it's been a really fun experience putting this together, and uh, I hope to to hear from from y'all soon.